All right, guys. So if you remember from 6.1, which was our first section, we talked about what a rational expression looked like, as well as how to simplify. And really, that's what we're going to continue to do today, is really going to be lots of simplifying. Um, we're actually going to take a look at it in the context of multiplying and dividing, which, although it may seem out of order, normally we would talk about addition and subtraction first. Actually, in this case, we need to talk about multiplying and dividing before we can talk about adding and subtracting. It turns out addition and subtraction are actually more difficult than multiplying and dividing when we talk about rational expressions. So let's talk about multiplication first, and then we'll see how division very closely follows multiplication. So when you're multiplying rational expressions, before you try to do any actual multiplication, the first thing you're going to want to do is factor everything you possibly can. And once you've factored out everything you possibly can, we're going to divide out those common factors. And once we've done that, then we'll go ahead and multiply. Now, just as a reminder, when you are multiplying, since we are dealing with fractions, let's say you're multiplying the fractions 2 thirds and 3 fourths, then what you would want to do is first simplify if possible. Uh, but if we were just going to simplify afterwards, we would take 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, and 3 multiplied by 4 is 12, and then we could simplify that to, say, 1 half. I just bring that up to remind you that when multiplying two fractions together, you multiply straight across. You take your numerators and multiply, and then your denominators and multiply as well. All right, so let's take a look at some examples where we've got some polynomials. Let's start with this first example, A, where we've got 4x squared over 5 multiplied by 25 over 7x to the fourth. So first thing we actually want to do is we want to simplify. If there's any common factors in both our numerator and denominator, let's go ahead and factor those out. Even if they're not right above one another and below one another, we can still simplify as long as one is in our numerator and the other is in our denominator. For example, we have both 5 and 25, where 25 is in our numerator and 5 is in our denominator. So if we wanted to simplify, both of those are divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now, that does it for numbers, but there are some variables we can simplify as well. Notice that we have x in both our numerator and denominator. We have x squared in the numerator, x to the fourth in our denominator. And so we can at least take away two of these x to the fourths. That would become x squared. When we take those two away, that's actually going to take all two away from our numerator as well. At this point, we should be ready to go ahead and multiply. And remember, multiply straight across. So in our numerator, 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. Over our denominator, we're going to take 1 multiplied by 7x squared is just 7x squared. Now, just like we did with simplifying, we are going to state domain restrictions as needed. In this case, since we have x in our denominator, we would want to say that x cannot equal 0. Although, for big ideas math, you would not need to type anything in for this particular example. All right. So let's do the same thing with this example b. So in example b, let's again start with numbers that we can simplify and probably the easiest thing to do would be to simplify both of those fours. In fact, I'm just going to cross those off. Those are going to simplify completely. Now, the next thing we can look at would be this 28 and 21. Both of those are divisible by 7. 28 divided by 7 is 4. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. Once we've done that, probably the next thing to notice would be that we can divide out these threes. In fact, they will divide out completely, so I'm just going to cross those off. That leaves us with only our numbers 4 and 49 left, and those are not able to be simplified, so we are done with numbers. Let's take a look at variables. So let's start with x to the third and x to the fifth. So the x to the third in our denominator will cancel out completely, and x to the fifth will lose three of its x's, so that'll be x squared. So now, treating that as x squared, and looking at our denominator where we have x to the fourth, the x squared is going to cancel out completely, and x to the fourth is going to lose two of its x's, so that's going to become x squared. 
So after all that, let's go through and kind of piece together what's left. Going through our numerator, the only thing that's left is this positive 4. For our denominator, the only thing that's left is going to be this 49x squared. Once again, for our domain restriction, since x is in our denominator, we'll want to state that x cannot equal 0. But since that's still pretty clear by looking at our final answer, there's still a factor of x there, we don't need to put anything on big ideas. All right. Let's take a look at some more maybe complicated examples. So let's take a look at example C. Unfortunately for us, in example C, we've already got everything factored. So that makes things a little bit easier. Let's still start by simplifying any numbers that we can. And notice that we've got 4 and 18 in front of our factors. Both of those are divisible by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. We also have some factors that we can simplify. We have 2x minus 1 in both our numerator and denominator, and so we can go ahead and cancel that out. What that will leave us with, because there are no other factors that are in common, is that our numerator has a 2 in front of the x plus 4 factor, and our denominator has a 9 in front of our factor of x plus 2. Now looking at domain restrictions, there are two places where we have our variable. Our first one, where we actually canceled out our factor, would have been a domain restriction if we set it equal to 0, which is that x cannot equal 1 half. And in fact, since that factor completely canceled from our expression and our denominator, that is going to be the one that Big Ideas Math is looking for in terms of a domain restriction. There is a second domain restriction, which, although is not needed in Big Ideas Math, is going to be important when we get to solving later, which is that factor of x plus 2, which means that x cannot equal negative 2. Again, that should still be clear by looking at our final expression, but still something that you should keep in mind. Okay. So for our last two examples for D and E, the only thing that's really different from what we've done in example C is that we're going to have to do some factoring before we can go ahead and simplify. So let's take a look at example D, and let's go ahead and start by factoring. Let's start with our first fraction with the x squared minus 25. It's only two terms and a difference. In fact, it is a difference of squares. So our two factors are going to be x plus 5 and x minus 5. As for the denominator for that fraction, we're looking for numbers that would multiply to be 6 and add to be negative 5. Be careful with your numbers that you pick here. The correct numbers should be negative 2 and negative 3. While it might be tempting to use negative 6 and 1, those do add to be negative 5. They multiply to be negative 6, so be careful to make sure you're using the correct values. As for our second fraction, let's go ahead and take a look at our numerator. Once again, we have a difference of squares. So our two factors are going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. As for our denominator, where we've got x squared plus 2x minus 15, we're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 15 that also add to be 2. All right, and those two numbers, I think we can agree, are going to be positive 5 and negative 3. So our, our values for our factors are going to be x plus 5 and x minus 3. Now, before we start simplifying, it might be useful to go ahead and state some domain restrictions before we continue to simplify. So the numbers that x cannot equal based on our factors, for the first factor, x cannot equal 2. For our second factor, x cannot equal 3. For our third factor, again, only looking at those in the denominator would be that x cannot equal negative 5. And for our final factor of x minus 3, we would say that x cannot equal 3. We've actually already stated that, so no need to say it again. Okay, so let's go ahead and start simplifying. Anywhere there's a factor in both numerator and denominator, we can cancel that factor out. For instance, x plus 5 is in both our numerator and denominator, so that can be simplified. 
Same with x minus 2. And while it might be tempting to want to cancel out your x minus 3s, notice that they are only in your denominator. You have to have 1 in your numerator and 1 in your denominator in order to be able to simplify. So actually, at this point, we are done simplifying. So let's go ahead and write what we've got left over. So in our numerator, we've got a factor of x minus 5 and a factor of x plus 2. In our denominator, we have two factors of x minus 3. So the correct way to write that would be to write those as x minus 3 squared. Now, taking a look at that, one of these domain restrictions should still be obvious, that x cannot equal 3. The other two that were canceled out were that x cannot equal negative 5 and that x cannot equal 2. Those are the two domain restrictions that you would need to use on Big Ideas Math. All right, let's take one last look at multiplication, and then we should be ready for division. All right, so in this last example, we once again need to do some factoring. Let's go ahead and start by factoring our numerator for our first fraction. So x to the fifth minus 4x cubed. In this particular case, we need to look for probably a greatest common factor first. In fact, we do have a greatest common factor, which is x to the power of 3. When we factor that out, we'll get x squared minus 4 still in the parentheses. And at that point, we can actually continue factoring. Notice that x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. And so for our numerator, we're going to have x to the third. And then for our difference of squares, we'll write that as x plus 2 and x minus 2. As for our denominator for our first fraction, x squared minus x minus 2, it has three terms and does not have a greatest common factor. So we can begin looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 2 that also add to be negative 1. And pretty quickly, you should be able to find those, which are x minus 2 and x plus 1. Next, we'll go ahead and take a look at x squared minus 1. So we'll take a look at our numerator for our second fraction. This is also a difference of squares. Remember that 1 is a, a perfect square. So we'll factor that to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. Finally, for our denominator for our second fraction, we've got three terms. We do actually have a greatest common factor first that we need to take care of, which in this case is also x to the power of 3. When we factor that out, we'll have x squared plus x minus 2, which we will then look to continue factoring. So we're now looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 2, which also add to be positive 1. And so those are going to be x plus 2 and x minus 1. Don't forget also that you have x cubed as part of our denominator. Okay, so once again, kind of like what we did on the previous example, let's, 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 let's list out our domain restrictions first, and then we can go ahead and begin simplifying. So looking at our denominator and our factors, for x minus 2, we would say that x cannot equal 2. For x plus 1, we would say x cannot equal negative 1. For x to the third... We do need to remember that that is also a factor. That would tell us that x cannot equal 0. And then for x plus 2, we would say that x cannot equal negative 2. And then finally, for our last factor, for x minus 1, we would say that x cannot equal 1. So actually, a lot of restrictions because there's a lot of factors in our denominator. Okay, so let's get to simplifying. We have x cubed in both our numerator and denominator, so let's go ahead and cancel those out. We also have x plus 2 in both our numerator and denominator. Same with x minus 2. Same with x plus 1. And same with x minus 1. 
So it looks like everything divides out. And, and so it's going to be important to remember that when you're dividing and everything simplifies, it simplifies to be the number one, not the number zero. That's going to be the thing that will mess some people up. Make sure when you're dividing and something simplifies, we treat it as a one and not a zero. What that also means, since everything was canceled from our denominator, is that all of these domain restrictions that we listed before are going to need to be typed into Big Ideas Math should you have a problem similar to this one. That being said, guys, this is all one section, but I think it would be helpful to look at dividing in a separate video. So I will go ahead and stop this video here. Make sure to watch the second video to see the second part of the notes for this section. And if you guys need anything, let me know. Other than that, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you next time.